Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is the dangers Gen X faced. A highly so, requested one. Generation X. Yeah, Generation X, which I think is 70s? 70s, 80s, I think. Oh, um, I don't My really... My mum's Generation X, I think. Probably, I don't pay attention to that. I know we're technically... Z. Gen Z, I think, aren't we? Yeah. Which, we're 99. But then, like, I feel like Gen Z get a lot of bad sticks, so I like to... Because I feel like, oh, I don't want to be in it. I don't really care, to be honest, as long as you're happy. The main thing is if you're happy. So this is, 70s, 80s, what basically children born in the 70s, 80s had to experience and the dangers of it. I'm getting a lot more dangerous than now. I know the world is dangerous, as always. But I guess there's no social media. Even though social media is dangerous, but less ways to contact people, less ways to make sure people can track you to make sure you're safe, I guess. Yeah, a lot. I'm guessing a lot harder. Uh, to stay safe, although obviously modern society has its own difficulties. Yeah. Smash that button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. Shout out to Melissa. Massive stream yesterday. Hopefully you lessons all enjoyed that. You Wait, literally went. Sleep. You went the whole. Well, you went. How many hours was it? Ten. I think. Ten hours in the end. Yeah. So shout out to that. No, ten and a half. Because started at eight, didn't I? Yeah, ten and a half it was. Uh, so shout out to Millie and all you legends who stuck with her. Are you ready? Yeah. The dangers Gen X face. What we got? If you grew up as Generation X, then it's probably a miracle you even survived. Oh, wow. At least that's what the modern world tells us. Many of the things that were normal back then are now taboo. In this video, we will have a look back and wonder how Gen X kids even survived. I suppose, yeah, like there's so many safety things mm. now where people are, oh like, my god, you can't do we that. We were literally talking about the stream yesterday, like with um, Gina, John and Kenny. Yeah about um how it was so different for them in their childhood than it, what it is like perhaps for my childhood and they were saying like they didn't even wear seatbelts in the car and all that no seatbelts they're probably just left to go out and play on the street yeah. whereas now it's a bit more cautious of oh yeah, i exactly. need to know where you are and when yeah, not exactly. not be back for a certain time mm -hmm. television wasn't everything but it was still pretty important okay if you were a kid in the 70s then you probably did not even have cable most people relied on a television antenna, which was usually rabbit ears and tin foil. Okay. Oh. However, there were some households that used an antenna that was mounted on top of the roof. Every so often, this antenna would need to be adjusted thanks to some wind or weather. This became a family affair. Dad, of course, was in charge of the picture, so he was right in front of the television. One of the kids would be up on top of the roof and ready to receive instructions from the relay of the rest of the family spread out from dad. No one ever thought anything about kids being on the roof and then falling off. Yeah, Most kids got, got there. up there anyways just to get a better view of the neighborhood or the stars. You won't be able to nowadays. Many newer roofs are much more steep and that might be considered child abuse to send your kid up there. I guess it's a good thing that people don't have to deal with antennas on the roof. <laughs> Summers as a kid were always fun, and why wouldn't it be? You were out of school, and that meant you could spend more time with your friends. But with all that running around out... <laughs> it's like so 70s or 80s, yeah. isn't it? Again, people will look back at what we think is like good like, style. The thing is, in like 50, like 10, like even 20 years, Archie's gonna look back at his photos like, why did you dress me? Oh my god. Archie, that's fashion now. You guys are so old school yeah. tours, and it is yeah. just what you used to, isn't it? Yeah, Outside, you were bound to get thirsty. There's nothing quicker and more refreshing than a sip from the garden hose. Of course, you had to let it run a while before it got cool enough to drink, but it certainly had a distinctive taste. Okay. When is the last time that you've seen a kid do this? Uh, it's supposed to be drink, unhealthy, yet here we are. But occasionally, I still take a sip from the garden hose. All these kids survived it as well. Exactly. The garden hose was also connected to a couple other activities that parents today may consider them to be too dangerous. The first one was the slip and slide. Oh, that, no, no that's, way. People I, use that now. I don't care if you tell me that's dangerous. I'm going on a no, slip. No, people still use slip yeah, and slide. They still sell it. Yeah, There's no way that's gone. No. The older editions of the slip and slide were a little bit more dangerous, and some kids broke bones or chipped teeth on these, but, but just about everyone child, slid off the end or over the side and got a grass or rock burn. Believe it or not, they still sell these, but they are a little bit safer. Yeah. This next item, however, I'm not so sure about. As kids, we all enjoyed playing in the water sprinkler, but some of these sprinklers could be pretty rough. This one in particular was really Ooh. dangerous. It had a solid steel base that could certainly hurt if you stubbed a toe on it or fell on it, but that wasn't the dangerous part. 
When the water ran through the sprinkler, it would move the metal fan blade at the top. At that point, it was like a little saw blade that was spinning fast on top, and it could cut through little water-soaked toes and feet. Kids were fast learners, though. If they got cut once, they would be sure to clear it the next time. Yeah, you won't be going close to it again. Kids in our day used to be outside a lot, and we loved it. Which is always good. That worked out great because most of our parents really didn't want us inside the house anyways. As a result, kids spent a lot of time out in the sun. And sunblock? We had no idea what that was. Are you talking about a hat or a shade tree? At most, we may have depended on SPF 4, and that's only if we were super cautious. Okay. Everyone was exposed to the sun, and many of us would compare sunburns at the end of the day. Oh, I mean, I, I do hate a bit of sunburn. Oh, I, just, I melt. I am a notorious low sun, sun cream, aren't I? You go brown. Yeah. Um, burn. Yeah, you burn. I Time put burn. the right amount on, I just go for a low factor. You, for some reason, don't put any on. Burn That's and not then true. put some That's on. That's not true. Yeah, I learned my lesson, though. Yeah, so every holiday, yeah, hardly any on. Burn, okay, but the rest of the holiday, you put some on, but you already burn. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, but uh, I suppose if you, if you did have some creep out then, did everyone I just go like around? I don't like just laughed at that. Actually, <laughs> did, did people acclimatise so that after like how many years the body got used to it, they didn't burn as much? Mm, don't know. Um, again, yeah, I like, guess maybe is that why skin cancer is so prevalent in older people? Maybe again, let us know in the comments if you know. When our they skin started skin. peeling, we would see who could peel off the biggest flake. Yeah, oh look, that one yeah, looks like Texas. It also wasn't uncommon to see teen girls and young women laying out and trying to get that golden beach tan. Quite often, they would speed up this process by using either coconut oil or tanning oil. Today, most kids get lathered up with anything from 30 SPF to 100 SPF. I feel like some people definitely still do that. I don't know, like tanning oil, coconut oil, so that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like people, I feel again. There's more safety around it now, isn't there? I, so I do use tanning oil, but I use Factor 30 tanning oil. Yeah. So I don't know. And you haven't used it very well because you always burn. No, I use it after I burn. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like people use that. It's just more so. Again, let us know in the comments. Think for kids. Parents in those days certainly didn't have to watch us like the parents do today. They not only trusted us, but they also trusted our friends and the rest of the community. Parents realized that we needed to do things on our own, and that was how we were going to learn. However, if they were watching and we happened to get hurt, there was no doubt that they were going to be laughing as long as it wasn't life-threatening. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing, like you say. I think people are a lot less trustworthy. Yeah. I don't think neighborhoods are as close anymore. In the, yeah. the UK, at least, again, let us know America. Um, and yeah. Yeah, it used to be you look up everyone's kid, but now I think it's each that. I think it's each their own a little bit. Which it, it, I prefer the old. If everyone looked in the neighbourhood knows each other, looks out for each other, happy days. But I don't think it's that anymore, yeah. is it? People are more paranoid as well. We're everything to a Gen X kid, and they provided Genius. us a freedom that we couldn't get from anything else. We could go on adventures that were hours away from home, and for the most part, our parents had no idea where we were at. We also it's used mad. our bikes to jump some Jeez, pretty shady crazy. ramps. We could do a lot with some plywood and bricks, and it was hours of entertainment. Yeah. As we look back on our childhoods and compare it to modern kids, it's hard to believe that we did all those bike adventures with no helmet or knee pads. This picture pretty well sums up the generation. This kid is jumping his bike off of a super tall ramp. Notice that he has no helmet, knee pads, or elbow pads. Just pure fun adventure. If this evil Knievel lands short, then the kid on the end oh, is yeah, in trouble, boy. and occasionally... You're doing rock, paper, scissors, spot, and spot, aren't you? You don't want to be last. That did happen. As you look at the kids on the side, you can tell that they are worried about this because they've seen it happen themselves. But the best part about this photo <laughs> is there's a dad <laughs> sitting on the front <laughs> steps, and he's smoking a cigarette while he's waiting to see who gets hurt first. For him, this is as good as any gong show on television. Back in those days, cigarette smoke was everywhere, and you couldn't avoid secondhand smoke yeah. if you yeah, wanted to. Well. In Houses. fact, most of us had at least one parent that smoked. Parents would send their kids into convenience stores to purchase cigarettes while they waited out in the car. 
Usually the clerk would just look out and get a nod from the parent, which would signal that it was okay to buy the cigarettes. If the parents were not around, then the kid probably needed a note from the parents saying that it was okay to buy the cigarettes. These notes were never all that official, and it might be written on a notepad, scratch of paper, or the back of a receipt. Dear clerk, please sell Rhett a carton of cigarettes. Thanks, Mom. Can you believe that actually worked? There's no chance that kids could ever do that today. No chance. Car safety was something else that most people didn't take too seriously. In the U.S., it became mandatory that every car manufactured after 1968 had to have seat belts installed in them. That's money, but but just wearing like them was more of a recommendation rather than a requirement until the mid-1980s. Until then, we stood up on the front seat so that we could see up over the dash, and our dad's arm was our seat belt and the airbag. Another thing that we would do is lay up on the back dash and pick our noses as we looked at the cop car behind us. We thought it was super fun when dad had a slam on the brakes and we came flying out of that back window and slammed into the back of the front seat. Back then, we had to learn how to take a fall, and the crazy thing about it is we couldn't wait to get back up there and try it again. I suppose sometimes you just get used to um, taking the hits, and you get used yeah. to it so many times. Obviously, you don't want to be taking them hits, but the car safety is a big one, how different it is. Definitely. Like, it's mad how completely yeah. different it is. Pickup trucks were not as common as what you see today. Okay. People that had boats would haul them with regular cars, even Cadillacs. Oh, and when Dad them, needed lumber, it was going on the roof of the car so that it could come home. He would tie it down a little, but it was still our job to help hold the lumber down as it was stacked on the roof. Yeah. So there we were, standing up on the seat, halfway out the window, clinging to the lumber on top, while Dad had his hand on our waistband to keep us from falling out. Somehow, his other hand was busy holding down the lumber on his side, which is pretty incredible to think about. At the same time, he was also steering the car, shifting gears, and smoking a cigarette. <laughs> just talented, then. Yeah. I feel like Gen X was just more talented at multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> it's no wonder that we thought he could do anything. Remember some of the other activities we did? We all had toys that are considered dangerous now, but back then it was completely normal. Lawn darts was one of those toys. Yeah, I think that got banned. That weighted sharp point could penetrate anything if yeah. you didn't get the heck out of the way. Clackers, click clacks, or knockers had the possibility of shattering and sending shards of plastic flying through the air like shrapnel. Yet somehow, some of these clackers survived. In fact, here is my pair from the 70s. Oh, wow. Wow. Back then, we learned how to entertain ourselves with the simplest of things. Do you remember making long chains from soda and beer can pull tabs? According to what they say today, we could have been badly cut at any moment, yet cool. most of us had minor... Like the metal way of doing the, the daisy chain. Yeah, literally, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it is just something to entertain you. And if you were bored, why not do that? You know what I mean? Obviously, we have way too much to entertain us nowadays. Yeah. Addictive and stuff like that. But I, I, if I was in a room and there were a load of cans, I had nothing to do, I'd happily do that. And it would enter, it's going to entertain your brain, isn't it? Yeah. Cuts, if any. But one dangerous activity that we all did was kite fighting. Remember this one? Fighting? You would fasten razor blades to the side of your kite and then swoop it down so that you could cut the string of your friend's kite. <laughs> if you were successful, then that kite would keep flying forever. But if your kite took a nosedive to the ground, then you better be quick and get out of the way of those razor blades. Wow. BB guns were another item that was quite common. Kids could go all over town with one on the front of their handlebars, and the BB wars would certainly get intense. Back then, we definitely did not have safety at the top of our list when those broke out. Definitely. Firecrackers were certainly a lot more accessible than they are today. It seemed like you could pop them off in every city and it was perfectly legal. Did you yeah, ever you set off some days. fireworks and then place them into your Tonka truck and roll it into the driveway where some neighborhood somewhere. girls were playing? What, that truck? Or... They're like the idea. Yeah, the idea, just the fireworks in it. <laughs> Jack, so that you could get their attention? No, well, I guess that was just me then. Speaking of jacks, they were definitely something painful to step on if you were barefoot. 
Any parent today that complains about a Lego being stepped on has probably never really stepped on a Jacks. The These things would like completely it. hide in the shag carpet and they were like little soldiers that were waiting to ambush soldiers. you. That just looked painful. With all that time that you spent on the bicycle, then I'm sure that you probably came in contact with at least one of these. Absolutely. One slip of the foot and metal, then... Metal pe pedals. I used to, oh, I'm that's sure painful. Metal pedal on I the can't bike. remember if I did not. On oh, my bike, maybe like my first ever bike, I'm sure. I whatever know. pedals I had, if you were, when you'd spin them and they'd hit your shin, oh, oh, it would hurt. I don't know if it were metal or not, I can't remember. If it weren't, that is only 10 times more painful. If it were, it's painful anyway. Like when those metal scooters, we flip around this. Oh, 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 I hit your ankles, yeah, that, that's sorry. not fun. Oh. This pedal could travel up your leg like a vegetable peeler. Kids today know nothing about that level of pain. Here is something else that could be really painful. These chairs were really comfortable to lay in, but when you got up, you had lines going all across your skin. <laughs> but that wasn't the worst part. They were not the easiest to adjust. Okay. You had to bend them all the way in so that you could adjust them further out. One wrong move and the hinges of these torture devices could snap down on you like a bear trap oh, and take off a chunk of skin. Yeah, finger. Are these chairs even sold today? I don't know actually. I've seen them before though. Despite all the dangers that were lurking all around us, it really was a special time to grow up in. People were friendly and neighbors were someone that you could count on. Some of the dangers that we see today are completely different than what we faced. Do you have any special memories? That 100%. I, I feel like, again, I don't want to be sorry, but it was simpler times in terms of there weren't much safety in there. Everyone was just having a good time. Everyone trusted each other and got on. And it, it did seem it was simpler things could entertain people. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like good times as well. Yeah, I think both generations have got pros and cons. I think, yes, the internet is bad in, in a lot of ways. It's, it's dangerous. But it's also amazing. But it also ways. does a lot of good you know you can research anything definitely you can connect with people that don't live nearby oh, I agree. Agree, but i've never used social media but he agrees yeah uh, safety as well yes yeah, some things are over the top and it's a bit like COC, but then some things make sense it's like, okay that's actually safe let us know what you guys think in the comments below smash that button guys smash that subscribe and watch the video have a fantastic day and we'll see you legends in the next one peace